Namaste. I welcome you all again for today's session on grade levels. In continuation with the topic of storage, physical storage device. So let's revise in just two, three minutes a recap about the storage um, hierarchy in DD DBMS. Databases are stored in file formats which contain records. At physical level, the actual data is stored in electromagnetic format on some device. These storage devices can be broadly uh, classified or categorized into two, three types, primary storage, secondary storage, and tertiary storage. The primary storage is that is directly accessible to the CPU comes under the category, this category. CPU's internal memory, that is registers, fast memory that is cache and the main memory that is RAM are directly accessible to the CPU as they are placed on the motherboard or CPU chipset. This storage is typically very small, ultra fast and volatile. Primary storage requires continuous power supply in order to maintain its state. In case of a power failure, all its data is lost. Second is secondary storage. Secondary storage devices are used to store data for future use or as backup. Secondary storage includes memory devices that are not a part of the CPU chipset or motherboard. For example, magnetic disks, optical disks, that is DVD, CD, etc., hard disks, flash drives, and magnetic tapes. Third is tertiary storage. Tertiary storage, tertiary storage is used to store huge volumes of data. Especially for backup, it is used. Since such storage devices are external to the computer system, they are the slowest in speed. These storage devices are mostly used to take the backup of an entire system. Optical disks and magnetic tapes are widely used as tertiary storage. Now the memory hierarchy, a system, a computer system has a well-defined hierarchy of memory. The CPU has direct access to its main memory as well as its inbuilt registers. The access time of the main memory is obviously less than the CPU speed. To minimize this speed mismatch, cache memory is reduced. Cache memory provides the fastest access time and it contains data that is most frequently accessed by the CPU. The memory with the fastest access is the costliest one. Larger storage devices offer slow speed and they are less expensive. However, they can store huge volumes of data as compared to CPU registers or cache memory. Then the magnetic disks, hard drives, Disk drives are the most commonly secondary storage devices used in present computer systems. These are called magnetic disks because they are concept of magnetism to store information. Hard disk consists of metal disk coated with magnetizable material. These disks are placed vertically on the spindle, a reed right head as shown in this figure. Okay, so hard disk consists of metal disk coated with magnetizable material. These disks are placed vertically on a spindle. A read write head moves in between the disk and is used to magnetize or demagnetize the spot under it. A magnetized spot can be recognized as zero or one. Hard disks are formatted in a well-defined order to store data efficiently. A hard disk plate has many concentric circles on it called tracks. Every track is further divided into sectors. A sector on the hard disk typically stores 512 bytes of data as discussed in our previous lecture. Now next comes
the RAID. RAID is nothing but redundant array of independent disks. It is a technology to connect multiple secondary storage devices and use them as a single storage media. The RAID consists of the array of disks in which multiple disks okay in which multiple disks are connected together to achieve different goals raid levels define the use of disk arrays so it is basically the disk organization techniques that manage a large number of disks okay so basically RAID is disk organization techniques that manage a large number of disks, providing a view of a single disk of high capacity and high speed by using multiple disks in parallel and high reliability by storing data redundantly so that data can be recovered even if a disk fails. Now, you know, basically why we are using this um, independent disk. Redundant means what? Redundant means uh, repetition and especially the data which is not much required that's the actual dictionary meaning of redundancy is the data which is not very important but you know your redundancy means redundance means repetition arrays means a stack of data or the records and independent disks why they are independent disks because they are whole and full now why we are doing it is for example if we are taking attendance Okay, we, I have one file and five teachers have independent files of attendance. The data is different, but we may have same data of, uh, file which we are circulating while taking the attendance. So there may be five copies then or if there is one copy at one time, you know, five people cannot access. So one thing is to access, you need to have multiple copies. Secondly, to, uh, you know, at the time of reliability, reliability means if one file is being uh, hampered by one faculty or maybe stolen or maybe destroyed by some means i know sometimes even tea coffee gets split so what happens is that if you have another copy you can almost retrieve it right so that is why when the data is too crucial you know everybody is keeping their data on google drive you know keeping their data safe so there had to be at the background since it's a distributed system where it should have a reliability and scalability as one of the aspect uh, most importantly synchronization is there but in distributed characteristics reliability is also one of the eminent feature for reliability we need to have multiple copies so that if one disk fails what we saw earlier that even if volatile or non-volatile both can have a failure so whenever in terms of failure we, we should be able to retrieve our data faster okay so how to retrieve it how to have multiple copies so raid is one of the technique which you know gives us different methods to do it. So the chance that some disk out of the set of n disk with, will fail is much higher than the chance of that specific single disk will fail. Obviously, if we have five copies, you know, in the worst case, all the five copies can be destroyed. But that's a very rare chance, actually. So you know, to have more reliability, higher. We are not saying that we are we are doing hundred percent reliability. You know, this is an uh, context oriented. And maybe uncertain problem and uncertainty issue says that we cannot solve the problem 100%. But at least we can solve near to 100%. So that's why it's called high reliability. So the chance is less that, you know, all the disks will fail. So this is an example given uh, very appropriate that a system with 100 disks, each with MTTF. MTTF, we discussed this term. The average time the disk is expected to run continuously without failure. So obviously this term is very important in terms of reliability and the RAID aspect. So approximately 11 years will have the system MTTF of 1000 hours, approximately 41 days. Okay, each MTTF is of this many hours. You can say one lakh hours. So originally a cost effective alternate to large expensive disk is required. Okay. So that is why this rate came into picture. So originally this stood for inexpensive. So I over here is inexpensive basically. So today rates are used for their high reliability and bandwidth. The I 
interpreted as independent but is it's also its meaning is inexpensive so improvement of reliability via redundancy so obviously if you want to improve the reliability you need to have redundancy that means repetition of data so rep redundancy is to store extra information that can be used to rebuild information lost in a disk failure now for example okay i'm i take the lecture online and say you have internet issue so what uh, how i'm dealing with this issue that i record the lecture put it on the youtube so even if you had an internet failure that means power failure or maybe an internet failure in between you can see the recording 100 times okay the another example is that for example during this lockdown certain uh, people are not able to uh, attend the lectures because of internet so what we will see we will see that previous performance how how uh, well they were in their attendance how punctual they were what was the performance what were the exam so we will come to know about the history of that student so you know it uh, makes us feel that yes it might that person may had a genuine reason you know we have 100% reliability that that person's reasons are genuine okay so these are the you know what is it saying that an extra information that can be used to rebuild the information lost in terms of disk failure so mirroring mirroring means shadowing so what you can do you can duplicate every disk logical disk consists of two physical disks every write is carried out on both disks so you know if suppose uh, i try to update a file and another teacher tries to access the another copy of the file which is not updated so it will go wrong this thing we discussed about the concurrency control and this is what is all about the distributed system and the shared memory and the tightly coupled systems which we discussed in our concurrency control lecture so what should happen if somebody is doing the right operation the previous the person who is reading it should have the updated copy so either he should wait till the right operation is completely performed or he should get the copy after the right operation and not uh, of the copy which was before the right operation started okay so that that means that if you are doing multiple copies every write is to be carried out on all those copies here a simple uh, mirroring means every disk is having a another one copy okay so that is called shadow reads can take place from either disk why because both are updated if one disk in a pair fails data still available in the other so this is all about the mirroring now mean time to data loss what is that term it depends on the mean time to failure and mean times to repair okay because there should be a time of failure and there should also be a time to repair for example we are doing online uh, lecture if abruptly something ends we again redesign the meeting and we repair that failure so example mttf mean time to failure of say 1 like hours mean time to repair of 10 hours gives mean time of data loss of 500 into 10 to the power 6 hours for a mirrored pair of this ignoring independent failure modes so probably this is not always possible because it's taking too much of times so to improve the performance the another technique is via parallelism so the what are the goals of parallelism in a disk system first is load balance multiple small accesses to increase throughput okay so we should have a load balancing act that is again a very important feature of parallelism and distributed system both parallelism large access to reduce response time okay so improve transfer rate by stripping data across multiple disks so what is block level stripping we did just now discussed in the previous lecture that block means the contiguous data okay the contiguous data of the sector so with n this block i of a file goes to disk that is i mod n plus 1 so requests for different blocks can run in parallel if the blocks reside on different disk that means you know a sequence of block is in on one disk the another sequence of block is on another disk so this will what it will do simultaneously we can access you know two sectors of the same 
uh, track in fact and that is called as striping okay so you do stripes and then you can access parallelly you know for example there is a whole bread and one person can eat only one uh, at a time it can be accessed to only one person so what we do we do the slices of the bread so if we did 20 slices okay parallelly 20 people can eat that bread which was actually not possible before we thought of this uh, striping concept so similarly striping is with n bis so if there are suppose four bis okay block i so for example four of a file goes to a disk so i mod n why i mod n because you know we have to divide the sector not with floating point okay we can't say that you go i will uh, i will eat uh, one bread plus 2.5 uh, 0.25 okay it's better that it's the whole part one slice or you can say uh, 0.5 but you know practically it's not possible so that is why uh, mod function is being used since in computer it starts from zero which is plus one okay so if we say it is the fourth uh, record okay it is actually three plus one because it started from zero So continuing with this parallelism pro process technique with stripping, the schemes to provide redundancy at lower cost by using disk stripping combined with parity bits. Okay, so we will include parity bits also along with the stripping. Why we came on to stripping? Because mirroring and shadowing was requiring a lot of time. So that was not a very feasible solution. And hence we shifted to RAID levels so we will see how different RAID levels are designed and what they mean. So different RAID organizations or RAID levels having different cost performance and reliability characteristics are decided as per their levels. Why these levels? Because they have got different cost and performance and reliability characteristics. So depending upon your application, what level your application and your project demands, in particular to that, you can uh, you know, accept that particular RAID level in your design because see every uh, rate level as an increase it will have some uh, more features but it will also have some more challenges with it and let's go with that let's start so rate level zero is block stripping and it is non redundant okay that means no uh, loss of information and uh, where data is not very critical okay so used in high performance applications where data lost is not critical. So basically in this level, a stripped array of disk is implemented. The data is broken into blocks. Okay, if you can see the diagram A of RAID uh, 0, the data is broken down into blocks, which is actually a you know, stripping concept and the blocks are distributed among this that we discussed in our previous slide. Each disk receives a block of data to write or read in parallel okay and it enhances the speed and performance of the storage devices so there is no parity and backup in level zero now the next level is raid level one which is called as the mirrored disk but with block stripping so you know we have increased the pre previous shadowing with block stripping so this can also be used where where it is offers best write performance. Popular for applications such as storing log files in data system. Now what this RAID 1 is doing, you can see this diagram B, okay, mirror this. So these are four disks and this C are the mirror disks. So RAID 1 uses mirroring technique where data is sent to a RAID controller. It sends a copy of data to all the disks in the array. So RAID level one is also called as mirroring and provides 100% redundancy in case of failure. See, in the previous case, RAID level zero, the same track was divided into blocks. So the data was not repeated, okay? And hence it is non-redundant. Whereas in mirrored data, if we have four disks, we have multiple copy of each disk. That is called as mirroring, right? Or shadowing. So you know, 100% redundancy is there, okay? So you can assume that how much memory we will hard disk or maybe secondary storage we will require. If there is a 100K, then you require extra 100K. 
and so on. But in level zero, if it is 100K, it will be 100K only. It is just to achieve parallelism, red level zero is being used. Okay, whereas the red level one is used for storing log files. So if there are transaction bank transactions going on every day and there is a power failure and you just, uh, you know, deposited one lakh rupees in your account and the power failed and next time you go, you see that you haven't deposited the account amount. So this, you know, this would create a blunder in the bank transactions. So for that, every transaction, there should have a multiple copies. Okay, and why multiple copies? So that you know the data is critical. Even if the multiple one copy gets destroyed, there should have multiple more copies, okay, to recover the data. So as simple as that. Now RAID level two and three, they are based on bit level striping, but not mostly used in practical uh, uses. Now what basically RAID two does, it records error correction code using Hamming distance for its data stripped on different disks. Now this Hamming correction code, uh, this is taught in your computer architecture organization. You can go through that lecture. Probably you will understand what is Hamming distance. It is basically the algorithm to detect error correction code. Okay, so that uh, records this uh, for each data it is calculated and stripped on different disks. So like level zero, each data bit in a word is recorded on a separate disk and ECC codes, that is error correction codes of the data words are stored on the different set disk. Now, since this is, you know, due to its complex structure and high cost, RAID 2 is not commercially available. Okay. Now, RAID 3. Basically, what exactly RAID 3 is, that RAID 3 stripes the data into multiple disks. The parity bit generated for data word on a different disk. This technique makes it to overcome single disk failures. Okay, so there is a parity generator uh, between the uh, disks. Uh, so due to which, you know, we can handle uh, different uh, disk failures. So there is a RAID control also in disk 3. Now what is RAID level 4? That is called as the block interleaved parity. It uses block interleaved parity. That means it uses block level striping and keeps a parity block on a separate disk for corresponding blocks from n other blocks. So in this level, an entire block of data is written on two data disks and then the parity is generated and stored on a different disk. Note that level three uses byte level stripping, whereas level four uses block level stripping. So both level three and four require at least three disks to implement RAID. Okay, so when writing data block, corresponding block of parity bis must also be computed and written on the parity disk. So to find value of a damaged block, compute XOR of the bits from the corresponding blocks, including the parity bits from the other disks. Okay, so this is basically, this will, you know, again, you will be able to retrieve the, power, uh, the data during power failure. So this provides high transfer rates of reads of multiple blocks than non-stripping. So before writing a block, Parity data must be computed. It can be done by using old parity block, old value of current block, and new value of current block. Two block reads plus two block writes. Or by recomputing the parity value using the new values of the blocks corresponding to the parity blocks. So if they do not match, you will understand that this data needs to be overwritten. Okay, so most efficiently for writing large amounts of data sequentially. Now to explain this, I will give you an example. There is a cash coherency problem, which uh, are discussed in uh, computer architecture and organization lectures. Okay, they are basically used when there are multiple write operations. Okay, and we are using uh, in distributed system, we are having tightly coupled system and that's a shared memory. 
So see if more than one uh, data item is being written. Okay, so there are two protocols which can be used to handle this problem. Now one is that cache read, cache update and cache invalidate. So cache coherency problem protocols are divided into two parts, cache invalidate and cache update. So in cache invalidate, this parity is something similar to that of cache invalidate. What does cache invalidate do? Whatever data is being updated, now that data is with the current system who has updated that copy. And since now the network is jammed by some other priority uh, processes, that data is currently updated is with that process itself. Okay, but on the shared memory item, it will be marked as invalidated. It will be marked the moment it was shared for writing purpose. The moment it was written back onto the shared memory, then it will be marked as validated. So this is a write invalidate protocol where, you know, if somebody tries to access the data and it notes that on the shared memory, it is denoted as invalidate. That it means that that has been updated by somebody else and that copy is not available on the shared memory. Another protocol is write update. Write update means immediately if somebody is writing on that particular data item, the moment it ends the data item writing, immediately it will put it on the shared memory and it will go to the exclusive lock mode. What is locking protocols? We have already discussed in our concurrency control unit lecture. So this parity bit is nothing like your similar to your write invalidate protocol. So, you know, you assign a parity to the disk where you say that this disk is, if it matches, then you say that there is no updation required. It is the current data is available and you can access it. Okay, because it will create, we have created duplications, right? So duplications, if they are not updated, how you will know whether they are updated or not? So next is RAID level five. That is block interweaved distributed parity. So it's an extension of RAID level four. The RAID level four was block interweaved parity, interleaved parity, and block level RAID level five is block interleaved distributed parity. Now, what is this? In this partitions data and parity among all n plus disks, rather than storing data in n disks and parity in n disks. Okay, so example, with five disks, parity block of nth set of blocks is stored on the disk n mod five. How you will calculate that this nth block is in which uh, disk? Because see, now this is also stripping. Stripping of the blocks, but with parity. So less number of disks. Why stripping is required? Because you have to achieve parallelism. So here, this distributed parity will make you achieve parallelism. Okay, but how to understand that which the block is in which particular disk? So you need to calculate this formula n mod 5 plus 1. Okay, where n is what? n is the nth set of blocks and 5, this is the number of disks. Okay, so with the data block stored on other four disks. So this is the diagram. Whereas in over here, in level 4, there was only in 1. So here, Parallelism would not be able to be achieved. So this is the best because over here stripping is also done, mirroring is also done, third level, fourth level, all four levels, combination plus uh, removing the drawbacks of each levels and then making all the ad advantages of each levels possible in this particular level. You can go through this chart. It will be more clear to you that how five processes are independently occurring. So P0 to P4, five processes parallelly occurring. So rate level five has a higher input output rates than level four. So block write occur in parallel if the blocks and their parity blocks are on different disks. So obviously stripping is being involved. So parallelism is being achieved. So rate level six, it is E plus Q redundancy scheme called as because it is similar to level five but stores extra redundant information to guard against multiple disk failures. You know, it is 
uh, we are assuming that if all this fail, then what? Okay, so in that case, it should have some extra information as I told you that in terms of lockdown, in suppose all the data gets uh, due to internet connection, all the data gets failed, but still we have got records of early in our hard copies. So that can be retrieved. So better reliability than level five at a higher cost, not used widely at all. Okay, because that's a very rare case and you know, a lot of cost expensive. And uh, probably in, even in this, since uh, some blocks are uh, retrieved in another blocks, still if you summarize that using OLTP and OLAP, you know, OLT and OLAP is online transaction processing, online analytic processing. There are certain algorithms which are used in our uh, DBMS as an extension of data mining. If you use that on RAID level five, you can still achieve what was being done on RAID level six. So P plus Q, P here is the parity uh, guard, uh, sorry, parity bit, and Q is the extra information to guard against the multiple bit fail. So choice of RAID level, there are six levels which to choose depending upon your application as said earlier. So depending upon monetary cost, because see with memory comes cost, okay, performance, number of IO operations per second and bandwidth during normal operation. So if you want parallelism, parallelism to be achieved in level zero with stripping, okay, so their memory will be less, but performance cost would increase because parallelism is there. In RAID level five, even memory would increase and parallelism would also increase. Okay, then performance during failure. This also we need to be how much is your application on risk, whether you should implement uh, write invalidate or you should implement write update. You know, if you are doing some aviation project, some uh, aeroplane services, then obviously write update protocol should be implemented because immediately if there is an abrasion, it should be recorded. Okay, it should not be it, the risk taking factors for those type of projects, you know, where risk is very high. In that case, you have to use the right update protocol. So their parity bit would not work. So performance during re rebuild or failed, this is also you need to consider. So what has to be done used to including time taken to rebuild failed disk. You have to consider if it takes too much of time, then you know, the transaction is broken or whether it has, uh, it has to be nullified because either the transaction should be